What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? We're picking your nose, Clark. Let's go. Look alive. Coming to you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now is the time where myself and Jim are going to speak. Da da da. Well, Jim, I guess we should start our show now. What show? Movie hour. Movie hour. How long is that again? We're actually going to go for the full hour this time. <laughs> okay. It just so happened to go the twenty-five minutes that I. What managed. happened last time? Just some edits. Edits. Just some, just some edits. I thought this was live. It is live, but also live. There's no such thing as a live podcast. As the producer of the show, yeah. I made the artistic. We're still growing. Yeah. We're still learning. We're still learning. I, I cut around some things to make ourselves sound better and more so professional. Mostly me. No. It was Emily's mic, Is actually. Is it because I fell asleep? <laughs> Is it because yes. I fell asleep? Yeah, you fell asleep the, the last yeah. half hour of the show. Well, just, uh, well, you know. Jim's snoring. I was, I, I'm a loud snorer. <laughs> it's the movie hour-ish. Ish. And the mysterious voice that you just heard is one of the funniest people I hear. <laughs> you hear from like the the grapevine <laughs> from from him Don't mainly because he, he tells you how funny he is. No, Brady had cochlear implants, oh, okay. um, and he didn't hear for many years. A lot of people oh. don't know this, and so he's only oh. been hearing for about the last. six So months. the fourth member of the Stevens brothers, Mike Stevens, Mike Stevens, yeah. Mike. But we call him Mike D. Why do we call him Mike D? Uh, so my middle initial is D for okay. Dennis. So my ID is always uh, Michael D. Stevens. And right. anytime you have the last name Stevens and the first name Mike, there's ten of you in a room. So it's all you. You can't go order a sandwich and just say, "What's your name, Mike?" You can't say Mike. You always have to have another additive to it. So it's Mike weird. D makes it easy. I've known him my whole life. Really? Yeah, because yeah. he's, he's my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah. see my Facebook posts about? Uh, advertising for you no i heard though you put the picture of me in london in the london hotel room is that the one <laughs> so and that's a that's a real london hotel room in, in a pretty nice uh it's the trafalgar hilton right in trafalgar square um but everyone you kind of say that is, with a pinky up i have yeah, no idea well, what you're talking about so in london and in europe altogether everything is so much smaller so at my size one shoulder was hitting the wall the other shoulder was hitting the glass and my head was you know on the on the so you saying you <laughs> had a stinky trip you had a squat yeah. to shower right? I, uh, I, lost my, I lost trip. my luggage on one of my trips to london and i didn't have any clothes i could buy that would fit me because everything there <laughs> like an extra large is that's not true i here. saw them shorts you bought well i had to go buy something from a sports store so i ended up wearing a george st pierre mma shirt around okay. until i got my luggage but you I, were one I of those guys well how, where did you get your shorts the one that had the oh, that uh, was in italy italy and those yeah. were were ex- ex- statue of David statue shorts, of David right. shorts and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. those are the and how well yeah, did it okay, help your game you well I just thought it would be fun to put those on and D someone up you know, yeah, statue in, of yeah. David I hear you man would you uh, explain what these shorts so the statue of David is a naked man <laughs> um, and a naked man it's beautiful art bottom. I don't know what you're talking so about so the shorts are essentially a, a very accurate, accurate representation of the statue of David from the belly button down to the upper thigh, so it's a wiener. But it's a very, but it's a, it's, it's a, an artistic it's a wiener medium, which an ar- means an artistic it's wiener. Spandex. Okay, and so you throw those bad boys yeah. on, and like I said, play basketball. Dude, he gets like thirty-five rebounds a game yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Like easy ain't, buckets. I hear that Mike, Mike uh, has some serious uh, game in the basketball. Yeah, court. twenty years ago. 20, 20 years, years ago? ago, there was something to behold. 20 years ago, I was slightly above average. I mean, you are 6'5", yeah. so. Yeah, I'm 6'4", but I'll go with 6'5", because people can't in, see in my shoes. radio. So in, my, just... in my shoes, I'm 6'5". <laughs> right. right. Well, I, in, I the, wear my lifters. in the Facebook post, I, I made mention, I was hoping that you'd see it, but you never saw it, so I'm gonna, <laughs> it kind of makes me He's sad. He's old, man. He's but, a, he ain't your age, dude. You're... But what does it say? It says, one of the funniest humans I know, but most importantly, a great husband to his wife and father to his kids. Wow. And then underneath that, I said... He made me say this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say that's just not something that's I want to He's, not, he's actually, really, none of that's true. <laughs> that's no. just not really respectable. No. Uh-huh. It ruins my street cred. It yeah. really does. <laughs> my bad. You want to know what ruined his street cred the most? Fun fun story. Uh, me and my brother were in a movie with Adam Sandler one time. Mm. And so we Which keep. Which movie was this? It was Punch Drunk Love with Adam Sandler. And at one point we were talking with uh, Adam. I I call him a, a, a 
No, I just call Same him uh, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> and so we so we keep calling D. We keep calling D. And he's all like, well, why are you calling, he's calling D? I'm like, well, his name's Mike D. And Adam Sandler goes, I know a Mike D. And, um, of course, he's referring to Mike D the from actual the Mike Beastie D. Boys. And I'm <laughs> all like, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's yeah. that's the Mike D. He's yeah. just a uh, Mike, Mike D. D. I'm Utah Mike D. And he's, actually, Mike D from the Beastie Boys made a clip. Um, when that movie came out, and he was saying, "Hey, here it is. It's Mike D, the real Mike D." Uh, so <laughs> I, I think, you. yeah, I think I had encroached on his patent, which I didn't mean to do. It's just, you know, like I said, I just wanted to order a sandwich and not be confused <laughs> with the other mics. I wasn't trying to step on his toes. What was it like being in that movie with Adam Sandler? I guess because I remember that was the movie that I would tell my friends. That my uncles are cool. Like yeah. they are. So the last time them. we were cool. <laughs> And well, and, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so I remember watch, uh, watching that clip. And I'll mm-hmm. be honest, I think that's the only part of the movie I've seen yeah. is that clip. You mess with my brothers? Yeah. yeah. And it, it's prim- primarily with Mike. Brothers? Like, it's Mike that speaks yeah. in that entire segment. Yeah, it you, was you awesome. Don't, so, so the. So you don't the, think we know where you live? The whole experience was awesome. Um, you know, my brothers are all professional actors, and I you know, have went the day job route, but uh, every now and then they'll pull me in to, to do a role. And obviously this is a really, really cool role. So um, the fun part about that scene when we shot it was, um, so as I go up to punch Adam Sandler, I'm, I'm a Southpaw, so I'm lefty. So when I walk up to hit, you know, I, I prefer the left, but luckily my brothers and I growing up always kind of worked out on a punching bag. So we had a punching bag in the garage that we would work out on. So I was pretty good at throwing a punch with the right. But if I hadn't done that work because of the way the camera is and the way I had to come in, I had to throw a right. Um, I could have come in there and just thrown a nice little, eh, you know, <laughs> you're going to get, get you. Get you. Go so, get you. So luckily it worked out. But it was so we spent a lot of time on that set. We spent about five weeks, I think, um, filming that movie. Um, four least. of it, I think, was in L.A. Mm. sitting next to Adam Sandler. So uh, it, it was really, really surreal because – the guy was one of the nicest guys I've ever met. I mean, he was a, a for real guy. So when any, anytime there would be someone in the crowd, because crowds ga- gather when Adam Sandler's filming a movie, and um, he would make it a point to find, if there was a kid with a disability or in a wheelchair or something like that, he would find that kid, pick him out, and bring him on set and just treat that kid like gold the whole day. He, he would make a point to go out and talk to people, and, and he was just a – a real down to earth nice guy, and then he like would like when the kid would leave, he wouldn't be like, "Oh, thank goodness that kid's gone." Too, he'd be all like, "Oh, wasn't that awesome?" Yeah. Oh, yeah. the guy had a real heart, and so so. Anyways, long answer to your question, it was awesome. I and that was Adam's kind of one singular role that was he was known for acting because up until that point, he was the the yeah. funny guy from SNL. He got so, nominated yeah. for a Golden Globe for it. So, what was that like to see? Was he? I, I guess you haven't seen him on any other sets, but what was it like seeing him on that one compared to, to the other ones? It's like, so you don't understand, like me and my brother Mike D here, we would talk, like like I lost a girlfriend over talking like the goat, like from that Seinfeld, like, hello, like we would talk like, holy crap, you know, we would do the goat from voice, the old Adam from the old Adam CDs. CDs to the point where it's like, if you don't stop talking <laughs> like the goat, I'm leaving. I picked the goat. <laughs> so we kept doing that to Adam. We kept doing his CDs for him, oh, reenacting gosh. them. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. But he was a good sport about so it. So he so so your uh, your aunt uh, Trish had a bunch of VHSs of his movies up to that point, and she wanted to get them autographed. So she shipped them out to us in L.A. to get them mm-hmm. autographed. He sees all these VHSs and he goes, "Oh, this won't do." And he got all of them as DVDs. And signed all the DVDs and right. shipped them back to her. Like that's how cool he was. Right, but the best story is what we did for your brother. Steve. Uh, yeah, we throw it back. But yeah, that was an awesome <laughs> yeah. for us. I he won know. for pre- he won president. You right? Won. Tell him what happened. Well, we we uh, we told the story. Oh, two did weeks you? Ago, that's right. Two weeks ago. Right. Right. But I remember from Seems my like perspective. Seems like forever ago. Yeah, he was Steve uh, was running for fifth grade class president. And this was right right around when you guys were filming this. And he comes back, or I think Dave or somebody came back to our house. I can't, it was so long ago, uh, with this tape. And we watched it. And we were just, like, watching over and over. And, like, I was like, that's Adam Sandler. Because my family, we grew up on Happy Gilmore right. and yep. uh, Mr. Deeds and Big Daddy. 
Like those are like the movies that we watched, and it's probably because of all the nice things that you guys would say about him because we had like kind of inner like. Uh, like because we hate each other. Exactly. Well, no, you guys have like you know, at, like behind the scenes, like actors and who are actually good people and stuff right. like that. So that was kind of like my mom. Oh, he's a good person. We yeah. we can let my kids watch his his stuff. His, his stuff. Horribly offensive. His stuff. humor. He's a good person. I like that. Uh, <laughs> we can look past all those f words. Exactly. Well, and anyway, go back. Going back to the Steve story, that was really cool because we he took the the tape to his class and like everyone thought he was like the coolest kid in school. And then that, that blew up his head and that traveled up into <laughs> high school and <laughs> to college and that led him to all the way to Kodiak. Uh, what is it? Kodiak cakes. cakes. Kodiak cakes. Yeah. Not yeah. out. It's not yeah. a, Kodiak not cakes. a sponsor, but if they want to, they could right. be <laughs> <laughs> we're not, delicious we're not. cakes, by the way, I, I, delicious I, I, cakes, talk about a probably breakfast. the finest cakes in all the town. <laughs> I, I really do have a box at home, and they are pretty good. Um, you want so on the on the on the different side, something the way I learned more about. I mean, I loved Adam, and Adam was a great guy. To this day, like I know if I ever needed like a favor, I could call him, and I'd get one. Right, so it has to be like the right one. The other, Wait, the only time. other person. I mean, I guess the director was Paul Thomas Anderson, and I could probably get one favor from Paul Thomas Anderson. But the one guy I'll never be able to get a favor from, but I think I learned the most from, was actually Philip Seymour Hoffman, who yeah. who passed away. The entire time we filmed, we spent most of our time with Phil. He was and our boss. He was our movie. boss in the movie, and he wouldn't speak to us. He wouldn't hang out with us. He would ignore us. Like, as a matter of fact, the only time I got him to say anything that wasn't uh, professional, like uh, talking about script or him yelling at Paul Thomas Anderson was when I told him that I wrestled in high school and he told me he wrestled in high school. Other than that, it was all professional. Well, he actually got uh, uh, what they call wrapped, um, meaning he finished all of his film work before we did. And so he was wrapped, and we still had scenes to do. And all of a sudden, at, normally at lunch, it was just like the four of us um, eating together, getting yelled at for playing basketball without putting sun lotion on right, and right. like whatever it was. And all of a sudden, Phil comes over, and he would be just – he came, he comes over, and he's all like, oh, my gosh, that was so much fun. I can't believe how great that was. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? And he sits, can I have lunch with you guys? And we're like, I would love to have lunch with you guys. And he just sits down. He just, and it finally registered because his character didn't like our, us. We were his employees. He treated us that way for the entire summer yep. that we filmed. Oh. And he never talked to us. Anymore. But the second he rapped, he was right. He was just like, whoa, that was swell. Yeah. And he was this Southern boy who was great. And every time he'd come back for Sundance, he'd actually check in. And he would be like how our, like someone would be up there, the, like my brother Dave or Nate or some of my other, other friends. Well, how, how are they doing? Everything's good. You guys are doing, I hope you guys still, you guys still working? Everything mm -hmm. great? And I'm all, what the, why couldn't we have been doing this all summer? <laughs> Yeah, and, the, but it, did, taught, it taught me a whole bunch about his character because they didn't like he, he didn't like us. So so when we filmed, he didn't like us. That's interesting. Didn't he come to a, a family dinner once, or am I making that up? No, no, I don't think he did. Okay, um, okay. but we could we could make it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> and no, he didn't make it. But another thing that was really cool about that, and I don't mean to spend the whole time on Punch Drunk Love, but it's a pretty obviously good, well known movie. Um, was all the people we met on the side. Because at the time, Paul Thomas Anderson was dating Just, Fiona Apple. Yeah, and so, Fiona, Fiona so, was like, the brothers! Yeah, so we're, we're hanging out with Fiona <laughs> Apple and then... Um, John C. Uh, Riley. John C. Would, Riley would just pop that in. See a lot, and then okay. at the at the uh, at the uh, the launch party, what do they call it? The premiere. Yeah. Uh, God, I'm sitting there, you know, rapping with 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 John C. Riley and Luis <laughs> Guzman, and, yep. and it's uh, and 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 uh, um, Action Jackson shows up. Yeah, Carl Weathers. In fact, Carl Weathers comes up to me. And the first thing I said to him was, "You're Action Jackson." <laughs> He's like, "Of all the movies I've ever done, <laughs> that's the one." And then, and then I got to meet one of my idols, which was Tom York, Radiohead, who's yeah. the lead singer of Radiohead. And he was kind of shy; he didn't want to really talk to anyone. And people would come up to him, and he kind of just push him off, and he wouldn't really, he didn't want to have anything to do with anyone. And I'm just like, "This, I love. Ray I'm, I have to say something." So I just walked up to him, going, "Screw it, I'm going to do it." And Tom York turns around, and he goes. You were in the bloody movie. And I was like, yeah, man. He's like, you were great. And I'm all like, oh, are you kidding me right now? And like, <laughs> like, and so like when we got done with our little thing, I got to spend like 
few minutes with him and he was really cool to me and when i left like everyone else that just got shot down by him plus i'm like like were you just talking to lead singer radiohead and yeah. I, i'm like yeah, we, we cool we hang. <laughs> you know how we do you know, you know how we do the highlights how did you guys land this role anyway like who got well so um another one of the actresses in the in the movie um ashley was uh cast ashley clark so she um mentioned the phone sex operator and the casting director called up dave and so dave actually got the audition first and they kind of i think were telling dave a little bit about the plot and that there were this guy had these seven sisters and dave said oh i've got four you know three brothers there's four of us and so Paul Thomas Anderson said, oh, four brothers, seven sisters. I like how that's working, I think. At least I think that's how it went in his head. And then had us film some stuff. With a, we filmed a family party. So we filmed one of our you – know, Brady's gone to a, many of our family parties. But just a family dinner. Uh, we had a baked potato bar. We set a camera in the room and just filmed us being us um, and some other things, sent it off to him. And Trish then, had, a, had a steel magnolias that she was – like there was a tape of steel magnolias that Trish was like, oh seen this yet and his last movie was magnolia yeah. and so um but there's also but he, he recreated that scene in the in the movie so when you hear when you see the, the phone sex operator hiring dave to go out and beat up adam sandler take it's in our money. home that's in our family home and <laughs> they came West out Valley, to, Utah. came out uh, filmed they it. came out we filmed it in our family home and it was a recreation of that scene that we had filmed from that fa- family party a lot of that got cut out but yeah. um, that's where that part was was filmed and so now what i've heard and i don't i can't prove any of this but what i've heard is actually so john c Riley and philip seymour hoffman were supposed to be the utah brothers that came out to beat up adam sandler and sean penn was supposed to be philip seymour hoffman's part so philip uh, so sean penn had to back out and they put uh philip seymour hoffman into sean penn's part so when we met um John C. Riley. It was the day he found out he wasn't going to be in the movie. Yeah, no. And they got replaced. It by... got replaced by. Well, I I got four brothers from Utah, and so yeah. So we had to film a bunch of weird videos, and they kept asking us for more. And the next thing we know, we were in in this truck, and there's all these people taking pictures of us. And there's I don't know. John Lofgren uh, is Adam Sandler's assistant. He's in all his movies. Like, did you just make a yeah. joke? You just make you a joke, little Nicky. That guy. He's also, he's so, it, and by the way, if he, he's an awesome guy. Dude Lockerin was is an so awesome cool. Yeah. Anyways, and so next thing we know, we're being surrounded by all these people taking our pictures. And all the clothes that we're wearing at that time, they took from us. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was our wardrobe. our wardrobe. Yeah. And so, like, I'm wearing an extra large shirt, which is from the, uh, the BC Boys uh, uh, clothing line. Well, the shirt I'm wearing was a first generation. They don't make the shirt anymore. And so they go back because we have to have stunt doubles for all the stunt stuff that we had to do. They go back to extra large and say, we need another one of these shirts. So I have this dude wearing another. And so now I have in my closet the original extra large shirt that I was wearing when I showed up. (laughs) They're taking pictures. And my stunt doubles extra large. Um shirt that they don't there's a one of a kind that they reprinted that nobody <laughs> else could ever have and they're both in my and i you know i can't wear either of them anymore but they literally took everything we wore why and, can't you wear them anymore because i don't know I'm weight gain. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little fat oh uh, all right it's all right yeah he's about to get back to the gym eventually Starting tomorrow tomorrow, Starting tomorrow. Gym. well maybe monday yeah maybe <laughs> maybe give it a weekend yeah Let's sleep on it. Let's see what happens. I don't want to make any commitments right now, but but there's going to so be some I, I, I do want to ask, so before we move on to our movie parts where we talk about the movies, I do want to talk about, because it is an interesting point of view because we are a film uh, t- talking about film and not something I want to talk about is, so obviously we have two other brothers that are heavy. Like Actually, Dave just got hired as Mark, Mark Wahlberg's uh, best friend in his new film. Really? I yeah. Didn't, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, he just, like, just happened this week. And okay. so he's That's filming awesome. that like next week and he's he's mark Wahlberg's best friend for the next week cool yeah and so and then and little brother and they're on amc and they're on hbo and they're you know and little brother nate did uh uh what's the one that everybody locally coke from miracle we played the bad guy in that and and so you know they they do all these movies and i'm more in and out because i do have a day job but then i also you do stuff like this and every once in a while do a stupid guy and Steven Seagal movies, but <laughs> um, but Mike D. The only reason why we got him to do the Adam Sandler movie was he actually came to us at one point because he used to do he's 
He's a state champion. He's he's done acting all. He's done movies, and then all of a sudden he would say, "Well, I'm not going to do another movie unless you can pay me as much as I'm making doing this." So when we're like Adam Sandler, yeah, I think yeah, I'll make that work. I'll do that. So so my question to Mike D is is so why I know my reasons why I'm not as invested as Nate and Dave. Why why are you even more disconnected? Why didn't you follow it? Why didn't you go after it? Um, well, so that's a good question. I love it. Um, and I have a lot of respect. Of course, it's a good question. Well, I, I have a lot of respect for the acting community. And, and you know, I hear your first podcast with Ryan Templeman and Ryan, when he was talking about his first uh, gig that he got here in Eight Great Ways to Build a Better Marriage, <laughs> I actually wrote that. So Yeah, and I, I was going comedy. through a divorce right, while I directed right. it. Yeah. Um, so it's not that I don't have the bug. It's not that I don't love it. And it's not that I don't have a lot of the same friends and don't have a lot of respect for it. Um but what I, I think what I understood early on was that the, the, the ratio for success was so small. It was so finite. It's almost like professional athlete or, uh, you know, some of these other areas where you, there are so many very, very good, talented people that just never make it. Um, and yeah, the, I, best, and I, the most talented people aren't the most famous and, people. And I see that a lot. And so what I also identified was as I was in the business world, I noticed that the skills that I had that were, that were, that were working for me on the dramatic side were also working for me on the business side. And so I was able to utilize my ability to speak, my ability to engage people, my, m- some of those you know, um, traits that I, that I had that had done well for me on, on that side were also working for me on the business side. And so I, I started to work my way up and, and eventually got into the executive tiers where I started getting into the VPs and then you know, got up to the C-level, so the C-suite. So I, you know, I've, I've been at the C-level now for almost a decade. And so it's it's a pretty comfortable you know it's challenging and it's different uh, and it doesn't give you the the bug of wrapping a movie with Adam Sandler um but at the same time it's it's been pretty it, it, i've ended i've ended up pretty well doing it and so i, I kind of I, I live vicariously through through others through my brothers through some of the things that they do and and uh, every now and then you know if uh, if i'm at a work function and they have those you know break the ice sessions where they say tell us something about yourself that nobody else would know. And everyone's <laughs> saying, you know, I raised chickens as a kid or, you know, I was a junior Olympian or whatever they are. I've always got the Trump card because I can say, I knocked out Adam Sandler in a movie. <laughs> so I've always got that. But that's kind of, I think, why I went that route. But I still, I still watch what you guys are doing. I still get a kick out of it. I still love movies. I still, you know, I'm really into the whole process. But for me, the day job ended up working out pretty well. And there's more schlubs like me that can make it to the top on that side than there are on the acting side. It's a tough, it's a tough gig and, and it's a tough thing to make it to the top. And it doesn't just mean skill. It doesn't just mean talent. It's as much luck as anything. And, and I think I wasn't comfortable with that, that much luck in my, in my future equation. Well, I'm a very unlucky person. So that's, <laughs> that begs the question. What you talking just, about? You got your own podcast. So that begs the question why I've decided to take this route in my life. Because but, you got to work with me. Exactly. That was, that was kind of the reason why I went to college is that. So you can work with me? I can have a, 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 pod, a degree a on, my, on my wall and a <laughs> podcast uh, that I could host with my Uncle Jim. In, yeah. in no, a very nice you, studio listen, in our Steve. studio in Salt Lake. Listen, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. With Jim Stevens. The... Every time you call me Uncle Jim, <laughs> what do I call you? Anyway, <laughs> Jesus, moving like, on. Moving on, Steve. <laughs> it's got a little quiet. Uh, yeah, when I was a little kid, I always dreamed of uh, a profession in cybersecurity. So it, it all came true <laughs> for me. I mean, it's just been a dream come true. You're the the embodiment of of an an idol to me. Oh wow! Oh, wow, you got to work on your uh, your bar. You got to raise it a little bit. <laughs> but thank you, I appreciate that. I called him. I know I did. I did that one. You got to stop doing that. Dude. I did that one on purpose. We're professional. I'm sorry. Equals. I'm sorry. He's no apologies. Anyway, I apologize for his apology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flashback movie reviews. It's time for our our wonderful transition to. Do, uh, do, do, do. Yes, that was it. What was the movies we we handed out? I forgot. I was I, sleeping for most I, of it. You gave me the movie Annihilation. Yep. And then I gave you the Ballad of Buster Scruggs yep. on Netflix, Annihilation. You can watch now on Hulu. I found out. So. Yeah, I did. I not say that last week. I don't remember. Eh. Well, well, you're pretty dumb. I watched it on a plane, and it was every bit as good on the. Plane. So which one? You want, which one? No, just Annihilation. Was which on the one plane. you want to talk about first? We'll start with Annihilation. I feel awesome. like that one's the more popular one. No, just the better one. The better one. Yeah, I remember watching this movie. A year ago, when I when it came out in theaters, my sister and I we got we when Movie Pass was still around, we we immediately went. It's still around. It is still around. Yeah, well, when it's it was just more, different. One when, when it was more functioning, 
<laughs> we <laughs> when it worked. Yeah, when we we went to the theater, and we heard it was this kind of like really kind of sciency sci-fi movie that would bend your mind kind of like how Inception did. And I remember when we went and saw it, there's a scene in the movie that still gives me the chills every time I see it. And it's the scene with the, like the blind bear, like yeah. that has like, it the, screams uh, out for him. Yeah. It screams out the, <laughs> the noises <laughs> of its last victim. Oh yeah. That, that was the only part of the entire movie that really just did not sit well with me. Everything else is just kind of like, it's like, what's going on? Like, I did not understand. Like, I, the second time I've seen it, I still don't understand what the me- the meaning is at the end of the movie, and I don't get how, like, like where she ends up and how Oscar Isaac's character is the other thing. It's just like so much that has gone on in that movie that I don't understand. I need to watch like hours upon hours of YouTube videos of just people trying to explain it to me. It's so smart for me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I liked it. Um, I I liked it. It was. It's not often you see an art house style science fiction movie, but um, but it, but it was good. I, I wouldn't say it, it was one of my favorites. I think Jim liked it a little bit more than I did. I didn't like Jennifer Jason Lee's character and her monotone, over the top acting that she was doing. Well, everyone was like very monotonous in that movie. Like except- she was even more. The, she, I, and I guess over the top is the wrong thing. Under the under yeah. the bottom. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> like just I mean, yeah. giving up on life. Right. If you had a decibel meter, she wouldn't have jumped more than three decibels at any point in anything she said. And so I that bugged me a little bit, but I'm I'm nitpicking. But the overall story I thought was pretty good and I thought the um the idea was pretty good. The end I, I, I get, you know, why and I'm not sure how much of this we want to give away. Yeah, don't no, that's, it's, it's old it's the that's the point of talking about older it. movies. The, the reason why we don't have a new movie this week is because there's really nothing coming yeah, out right now. Yeah. Like we talked about Dumbo last week yeah, for crap's tough. sake. Times are tough. So, yeah, talking about so Dumbo. like there's no nothing coming out. So the fact the, the reason why I like talking about older movies and I don't think anyone else is doing this is because we can spoil. We can if you haven't seen it at this point, then then hopefully what we talk about does spoil it because that's the movies that I like are the movies that you might not like and the movies that you like I might not like and I want to I want to know I want to watch everything I love watching those things so I love hearing people say I hated it I loved it and those are the movies I love more than anything because and it's the kind of movies I try to make me personally I try to make these films because if I can make you hate something like for some reason I get a kick out of that. Like I You're think, messed up. Yeah, that's why I get, <laughs> you need I get, help. Professional, total, you should talk to someone. I got a total kick out of the fact that I can have someone leave the 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 the, the theater and <laughs> love it, and they love one person loves it and goes, "This is the most beautiful film I've ever seen," and then have someone else go, "What a piece of crap." <laughs> That's why I say you're the Woody Harrelson of, or not the Woody Harrelson, the Woody, <laughs> Woody Allen, the Woody, Woody Allen, Allen of Facebook. Facebook. So, so the thing that I that, that I'm just at the end that that I I have problems with inconsistencies in films. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was telling you guys the other day, my problem with Aquaman was, you know, Aquaman and his Atlantic Mara. Atlantis sidekick steal a boat He's to get to an island, right? Mara. and and they can both swim underwater. Fast. There's really no need Very for them fast. to have a boat, right? They, so that those things bother me. So at the end of this movie. Um, when he's when she's watching the video of her husband and he dies from a flash grenade, yeah. you know, and kind would've, of burns himself been, up, it would have incinerated. Well, she him. T- she sends one off herself, yeah. which puts the whole thing ablaze, burns the white ha- the lighthouse down, and burns then, everything down, burns the alien, everything everything goes down from this blaze. But the same thing happened with her husband before, but nothing caught on <laughs> fire when he did it. So those kind of things drive me <laughs> nuts. Those things drive okay, me. Okay, fair enough. Here, here's some things I think that were lost. That a lot of people didn't pick up on. For num- number one, for all the all the the movies, especially that were at Oscars last year, they were talking about you know this and this and this, but nobody's talking about this was a mostly all female cast. It's true, which like, I thought was great. for the most part. It was, but and the, nobody. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, he's so true, and he's awesome, and he's awesome. But they, he's there, there needs to be more female films. But they're there, there told, to and they're that. totally sure th- and there should. But I there was, think nothing that, was said of that. And I think that's the best part about it is that it just it just happened. Like there was yeah. just a uh, you uh, didn't notice that it was an all female yeah, cast, exactly. which is I think kind of what's so awesome about it. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. with And because any uh, any other film that would have been all female, I think would have gotten more attention, and yet it got completely ignored. Um, the director Alex Garland, he he's one of my new my favorite new um, guys. Like he's so good. Other than other than the guy that's doing Lobster, and he did um, 
uh, the favorite, and he did uh, the favorite. The favorite, but anyways, but but, but Alex Garland. Just so you kind of get an idea, he did Expanchina. You have to say it like that. Everyone else says say other like says that. Machina, Machina, but he did Machina. Machina but he 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 wrote and directed that. He also you can't say it say it normal. I don't Just know what it, it. I honestly don't <laughs> know. Say it normal. Machina. No, that is not normal. That he is also, not even close to normal. He wrote Twenty Eight Days Later. Yeah, that's which a great is one show. of the greatest horror films that also is like just out there that people are like he wrote that. He, I think that's one of their slogans. One of the greatest horror films that's that nobody, out there. Nobody's talking. That nobody's <laughs> talking way, about. Just out there. way out there in the back aisle of yeah. marketing, marketing gold right there. <laughs> he wrote Dread, the new one, not the. the I the, am. No. I'm a I'm a Dread the purist. Wrong. I like. No, yeah, I'm a, I'm a the, Stallone Dread guy. The new the Dread was, was brilliant, was. and he wrote that. Um, he also wrote one of my favorite films, uh, Sunshine. And if you have, that. that's one that that's actually the one I'm going to challenge you with for next week. Oh no! Yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, Sunshine, which uh, is another film that's kind of a uh, weird. I like weird films. What well, can I say? And like the it's going off of Danny his... Boyle dro- directed this one. Okay. Well, going off the, uh, this director and his last two movies, I think it's kind of funny because at the end of Ex Machina. It also makes everyone's like, what the heck just happened? Well, and she like, uh, she basically goes out into the human world, yeah. and now oh. she's a human. And at the end of, uh, of Annihilation, the yeah, they they come back, and Natalie Portman and Oscar Isaac are whatever uh, are, happened. To, are they? Yeah. Well, their eyes are. They are. are they? Oh, they are. That's the point. Like, I have no idea because yeah. that's what I don't get. It's because yeah. Oscar Isaac's character. You see the normal, the the original guy <laughs> blow up and get incinerated, then the the mimic alien thing yeah. walks away and yeah. like, okay so, that's him but then the, whatever what, why is natalie portman so did it did it not blow up the first time because of the bomb or did it not blow up the first time because they weren't ready to have the two of them to be able because it, it needed more than itself and it, it, it didn't it, the, the bomb didn't have anything to do with blowing it up it it, it it accomplished its mission and now that they have the two of them now they can go out into the. I mean, I'm just saying. Maybe I don't. I'm not saying that's. But that's what that's I'm saying good. is I don't. No, think, I, don't I don't think, think the, that's true at all. I think you're making it up. I, I think that that's fine. But they still <laughs> hit a flash grenade and it torched the whole place. Okay. And that's the second flash grenade they put off it, in that but lighthouse. It, but the second one was flammable. But it, the let first alone one was contained. It, that's all. That's all. Completely uh, stoned. But no, I get your point. It, that that so at that point, Left, essentially, it open for interpretation. All, all, the purpose had been met. Uh, everything was torched because th- what they were trying to do was, you know, maybe get a male and female out mm. into the wild, and that's what they did. Um, so they can, because now they have something that can reproduce, right? and now they have something that can take over. And maybe you're an alien. Maybe you maybe are an alien. Maybe he'll make a sequel where it's Ex they'll Machina make, he'll, uh, ex- versus Annihilation. No. Ex- Machina, he did make that, ro- that half robot hot. It, that was the thing. I've never seen anyone so do it that well where, you know, you almost feel guilty no, we'll, about it. We'll talk about that robot. one another time. That's another one of my favorite films. And we'll, we'll bring that one up because I love that but one. That's another, that's another one of those movies where people Just are saying, like, Alicia it was a hot robot. That's all. That's all. It was I better than a Tomb Raider. Robot. Alicia it was a hot robot. And I actually, I think Tomb Raider, even though it wasn't f- like a phenomenal movie, it, it actually w- was a great adaptation of a comic <laughs> book, the video of game. a video game. And people want to direct Tomb Raider? No, but the girl the, from oh, X we're, 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 we're going down that. She, she's right. rabbit hole. All right, rabbit hole. All right, next film. What do we got? Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which isn't really just a movie. I, I realized that when I was watch, rewa- uh, a, watching it this week. It's a ballad. Yeah, it's a. It's basically like a TV show of just like kind of many different scenes, which I thought found interesting. You mean ballads? A ballad is that the? What did you find interesting? Formal? What specifically? What did you like? About no, he doesn't get to go first. It's yeah, his it's film. His, oh, yeah, okay. he, it's so his we turn. get to, we get to talk guy. about his film first, and then he gets to defend it. Sorry, no, he's fine. So I think what I like about this, and what I didn't like about Ballad of Buster Scrubs, is I think they gave the Coen Brothers a whole bunch of money to do a Netflix film because it's the popular thing, and they have like a whole like backlog of like short films and films that they never made and they went you want to give me how much money and to do what hey uh hey brother uh you do you want to like get rid of like nine of our <laughs> little sure. short films that we haven't figured out how to turn into full feature films sure why not and i think some hit home really good like the first one yeah, the, f- the, first the one. actual buster scruggs one where he's <laughs> white yeah. 
suit shooting guy, uh, the 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 no limbs Shakespeare speaking dude that gets traded for a counting chicken, <laughs> like. They were brilliant, and I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed, and then I thought that then there were others that were dragged, really dragged, and were um, like a rip off of eight great uh, of uh, uh, hateful eight, and that were rip. And then I think they were just. I, I really do. I think that there were some that I just don't think they knew what to do with some of these stories that they had, and they were able to get paid a bunch of money to just release them all, and some were gold and some I, I honestly don't remember yeah uh i was surprised at the cast in the movie no like I was, everybody i was i was watching i was like hey is that james franco mm-hmm. and then i don't even know the name of the guy but the, the the first guy in the movie the first ballad yeah he was in the holes movie back that's kind of what went back to my Do you know uncle nate almost made he was almost uh, i thought you weren't supposed to say uncle nate I can say whatever oh, I want. Well, right. He was almost Shia LaBeouf's uh, character in Holes. It was between uh, Shia LaBeouf that. and Nate. Yeah. Oh, so that's why. And, and the like weird Shia. thing is, uh, Dave was up for um, the, that character, and what is his name? I hate that I have to look it up. Um, Mike well, D. I was uh, so. Here's what I thought about. It. I watched it in my hotel room because I, I Tim tra- Blake. Sorry, I travel quite a bit, and so I watched the Annihilation on the plane, and I watched uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs in my hotel room, <laughs> and I honestly couldn't get all the way through it in one sitting. So I got halfway <laughs> through it one night, and then the other half through the other. I think that it started off really good with Buster Scruggs. I thought that was really funny. Um, I, I loved the way it ended. I thought it was great. Him singing. Yeah, I I, oh, I I also thought the the guy with no arms and no legs. I mean, that was dark, man. That was dark. <laughs> <laughs> but that's right up Jim's alley. You know, when you talk I loved about it so much, Jim Jim wants to betray his audience. I mean, that one was that makes you throws feel... him off a bridge for a counting chicken, right? Well, I mean, the chicken's more efficient and it's way cheaper and way it's cheaper. easier. He doesn't, you know, all all the struggles he was going through has to help this guy, you know, go to the bathroom and think. But like I said. I, I can understand why he would make the decision, but the fact that I can understand it makes me feel like I'm a bad person. Uh, and it's a dark, dark... But but a lot of it was really, really slow and didn't move real well. Um, the scene with the guy who was a gold digger... No, that, was, that one that was, was funny. That wasn't my favorite at all. I, the only thing is I was trying to figure out if there was a tie. So the whole time I kept thinking it's Coen Brothers. Like Black Something's got to be thing. tying everything together. And at first I thought bullet, bullet holes to the head. Because there was a lot of bullet holes to the head, but in the end, I came to the conclusion that it's just, just a bunch of random, just a random stuff, stories right. being. So told. I was over overthinking it a bit. I think I was curious why this got nominated for best screenwriting uh, because there's some really good parts in it. Yeah, yeah. There, that's I think um, it's because of the cast. It's because I think the weak parts are weak, but I think that the the strong ones are that strong, and 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 I think that it deserved all that. Um, and by the way, the, do you know who the gold prospector was? Who? Do you know? I have it up here, right? So I'd be it's Tom Waits. Yeah, I was gonna. Tom who? Tom Waits. Waits. Who's that? Old school singer. Old school. Like he's been in very few movies. Oh, really? And if you actually want to find out where, in my opinion, Heath Ledger based his character of Joker on, mm-hmm. go look at old interviews with uh tom waits hmm. and it's to the to a t how he spoke his inflections it's almost creepy wow yeah so i'm I'm serious everyone like put that in your things to, to go watch tom waits interviews and you could even say tom waits uh heath ledger and it'll probably bring it up because it's it's really creepy weird how much it's like holy crap that's the joker cool and to go off, kind of close out the ballad of Buster Scruggs. I thought it was shot beautifully, kind of yeah. in that southern. I want to say it's probably shot in southern Utah or in Arizona or Colorado, yeah, wherever the Coens want. Yeah, but it was it was shot beautifully, especially that one with the old man. I thought that one was like kind of more or less uh, really focused on the art of film and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there was some beautifully shot. That, that 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 is a good point. Everything was beautifully shot. So it's so the Cohen brothers. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know uh, why uh, Bill Murray did uh, Garfield? Why? So uh, Garfield, who directed Garfield? Uh, that's a movie I've yeah. tried to forget. And if you have that information in your head, you 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 need more important things in your head. Cause you, why? 
who directed Garfield? Yeah, the first one. <laughs> There's so, a second one? There's there. a second? Yeah. No, it's, so, uh, so I believe the story goes that he thought one of the Coen brothers ended up writing it. So he took it, and he took it. <laughs> I might, I'm, I might be wrong on that, but I'm it's pretty sure that right. he he thought that like, well, whatever they're doing, I'm, I'm in. Doing. It's like can't I'll, let me down. Uh, it's hard though because the Coen Brothers are some some of the one of my favorite movies is No Country for Old Men. I, I love that movie. So whenever the Coen Brothers do something, I'm in. I'm going to give it a shot. You know, but this one wasn't this, my favorite Coen Brothers movie. We, we hit and miss on that one. And I know it. Last week I said that I'd watched it before. Uh, I hadn't. I watched it right before I walked in here. So that was uh, when I when I sat down. I was like, "Oh, what did I get Jim into?" <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, to segue, every year Jim and I we get talking about what's our favorite movies, what's the, our favorite movies in the best picture race, and we're a fourth uh, a fourth of the way d- done with the year already, which is crazy to think. And the last two years. One picture in the best picture race has come out in the fourth um, in this fourth year, so we decided to in the first part of the fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, from January to uh, to April. Yeah, there's a movie in the last two years that came out that made it into best picture. It's only happened three times since 2010. The last two, obviously, were Black Panther and then Get Out. Do you know what the third one is? Damn, go back. Black Panther was crap. Um, That's not the question. Hell or high water? That was, that was September. I don't know. It's 2013, and the the movie was I had it right here. Oh, you didn't have it? Like just cute. I up? I remember the Grand Budapest Hotel. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Okay. Which which is uh, we're gonna get on to my Wes Anderson love uh, at another time because he is so good. Is oh, awesome. Grand Budapest is so good. So that came out March of 2013. So yeah. those are the Did three. you see that one? I have not seen that one. I haven't seen that one. Either. Have you seen any of Wes Anderson's films? I watched Isle of Dogs last year. That's you've only seen his cartoons. Okay, okay so yeah. Y- and, well, have you seen Royal Tenenbaums? No. Oh. Man, and fantastic Steve, Mr. Fox. Uh, a Steve Zuzu, or uh, yeah. uh, uh, dude, he's, he's so bizarre. Um, that's how um, Owen Wilson got to start because him. Did he uh, direct uh, Midnight in Paris? No. Okay. So Owen Wilson and uh, Wes Anderson they did uh, Bottle Rocket together. Okay. They wrote it together, but they couldn't find an actor, um, and then they ended up hiring Owen Wilson's brother. Um, the other, Wilson. Wilson. The yeah. other Wilson. Other Wilson. And they couldn't find anyone to play the other brother. And so they ended up putting in Owen, who didn't want to act. And it just, wow. he, he just, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then it took uh, Owen's career off. But it, Zoolander it, hit it, and it, it was over. I, I still, I can't get through Zoolander. <laughs> I can't watch it. I've never finished Zoolander, not. I've never seen Zoolander. It's mindless fun. I can't finish it. You, you, it's true. It you got to be able to fun. turn your mind. I, I watched off. it the yeah. first time my freshman year of college. I've never yeah. finished Zoolander. Oh. It's a, it's a confession. You I should watch the I second. Think, one. I heard the second one is by far the better. The problem film. is I think you can't watch crap. the second one, or you'll just be lost. You'll be lost. There's so much plot in the first one. Right. If you don't get all that up to speed, <laughs> you'll just be drowning in Zoolander uh, too. You got to go back. So to, for you at home that don't like to go watch movies but want to keep up on the best picture movies we want to do this segment not every week we're going to do it uh so we're going to do this in april every quarter and then we're going to do it in july and then we're going to do it in november oh jeez and then at, in november we're going to do an every other week thing because that's kind of in when it starts building up in oscar season up leading up to next january where uh the oscars comes out so. oscar oscar so Oh, uh, we kind of went into. I our believe they did it in February this year. The February was a re- it was a really late season this year, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, maybe you're just weird. Maybe no. I'm wrong. Anyway, we're we're gonna go over the best movies of 2019 so far, and the odds of them making it being nominated. I don't think any of them will. I think there's one or maybe I would say there's one movie that probably won't, but it's got the best chance. And then there's a second one I think should. What are you talking about? Us. Us, I think, has the best chance, too. I think yeah. Us has the best chance. And it's my favorite one that I've seen. And mm-hmm. a lot of them I've been going through and I was because I was trying to figure out because it hasn't been a lot. I, I watch a lot of movies, but I haven't. So I started researching best movies so far. And a lot of these movies, I'm like, either they're foreign or I have no idea what they are. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I I feel like blinded by it. And I'm like, either they're just nothing uh, us i loved i loved us you know that mm-hmm. we talked about that a few weeks ago but i thought us was way better than uh get out mm-hmm. just 
brilliantly hilarious. So um, do you think that it will be? It will be, or do you think? I think Get Out had the kind of. I think he'll get steamrolled again. I think he'll get a, a writing credit or something like that again, mm-hmm. and he won't win. But I think he'll be up for best screenplay or something like that. Okay. And and I've been watching his um, uh, Twilight Zone as well. Okay. And, you know, so I don't think Us has had the the same no. effect that Get Out did. But I think people better. It's way better, and and I got like I got the and and I and it's and it's my opinion, but my problem with um, Get Out was I picked it so mm-hmm. so early. I went, that's what's happening, and the only problem was I said it verbally, and everyone around me went, "If you're right, <laughs> I'm gonna be." And I, but I like, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm I think sorry. it's really hard for horror movies or scary movies to make you know an something Oscar new. Nod. Well, that's it's. Horror movies and comedies, are, right. like, those are the two that just right. kind of people. But I think it's harder to do comedy than it is to do, um, than it is to do a drama. And and mm-hmm. us is hilarious. Oh yeah, and it's both. It's true. It's hilarious. It's it's got the horror and well suspense and, and it would and be it's so it's so far it's my top. And okay. then but then but the other ones on the list like you got like I, I, what I'm gonna watch this week is uh, fighting with with my family, okay. which I keep hearing that one is a really good one. I haven't seen it, but from all, all the people that I've if you are a WWE fan, you'll love it even more. I heard it's like you don't even need to. I know, to. but like yeah. if you if you are a WWE fan, that's the movie you have to see. Yeah. But even if apparently, you're not, yeah, you're like, just... like it's like one of those movies where you hear it's like it makes me remind reminds me of the 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 the, the Arnett movie. What's his name? Uh, Arnett. No, uh, the, the the fighting one he did uh, <laughs> with. Oh my gosh, I can't. Where he went on the road with his buddy and won a. He's a. Oh, I'm terrible at this, but it was a really bad wrestling movie from like. 15 years ago and it basically ruined his career um the he's the bad cop or he's the cop in scream uh, okay with the dumb mustache what's that dude's name oh yeah married to uh yeah. the girl from friends chris cox yeah. yeah oh my gosh that's terrible terrible podcasting but it, no well it's bad if you're known by your wife's friends credit, yeah. <laughs> right if that's how you get recognized. and that's my only other like wrestling movie i can remember anyway anyway yeah moving on. well just so. to get you back on Stay on target. Sorry. So <laughs> what else? David Arquette. Thank you, Emily. David yeah, Arquette. That's why we have her here. Because she's, uh, she's smarter than me. So, But, yeah, that's one that's on my list that I want to watch. But I came out of nowhere that I'm like, I can't believe that this one is getting anything. That one, I would suggest if it's anything, it'll probably be screenwriting, uh, original screenwriting. But I don't know. I haven't seen it. That's what I just hear, like, the writing, and it's very good. And she's excellent as well, the lead actress. Uh, she, that's, if it's anything, I think it's either, I don't think she'll get nominated for Best um, Actress. It's going to get a sequel is what I hear already. And I heard that, too, because yeah. she's, uh, the, the, play, uh, the, the wrestler she plays in the movie uh, is uh, one of the greatest WWE female wrestlers ever. So she's got a lot of story to tell still. I want to, I'm going to, and it, may, it got me interested. I want to watch it. Mm-hmm. Another one that's on the list that I want to watch because I, I never heard of it, but it's called long days journey into night. I've never heard of that one. Right. Apparently there is a 56 minute single take sequence. Wolf. All shot in three. How long? 56 3D? minute wow. single one take, take sequence shot in 3d. Oh, that's not, wait. So is it gonna? Is it like part primarily takes place in 2D and then it just switches into 3D in the middle of the movie? Kali'i Blues director Bai Gan concludes film. his sophomore feature with a 56 minute single take sequence shot in 3D. Don't, okay. I don't know what to take of that. It's just like okay. How I don't know how I'll see it. I don't know how I can. See, I don't have a 3D. I remember when you I've had got the, one. I got a 3D TV. I, like, I can watch it at my house. I want. I will I'm find it in something that. Yeah. <laughs> talk about tech that's paying off. <laughs> Finally. Talk about talk about good decisions. How I got do that 3D you, TV. Six minute single take alone, and then doing it in 3D. I don't know. What else you heard about? What are you walk? What's on your list? The one. So the one that we haven't talked about. I think that. It, should be nominated. It, it probably will one. If it's anything, it'll probably be a best actor nomination. Is the Mustang? Uh, yeah, you just told me you went and saw that. I one. went and saw that last Friday. I a lot of the people that I follow with uh, talked about this like small movie that they had no idea anything about it and just destroyed it and like awesome. Like it's what's 90, it about ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, seventy four percent on audience score. So it's, kind it's of, one. It's so it's a it's it's a snobby film. I wouldn't even say that. Um, snob. But 
I went, like I said, I went last weekend and a little kind of, I'm going to just read the synopsis because then I'll be able to, you'll be able to follow with me. It's like Roman Matthias Schnorts is the actor. Matthias Schnorts. <laughs> anyway, he's a convict in a rural Nevada prison who struggles to escape his violent past, is required to participate in an outdoor maintenance program as part of his state mandated social re- rehabilitation Rehabi- rehabilitation I think that's a word okay spotted by a no nonsense veteran trainer who's played by Bruce Dern and helped by a, an outgoing fellow inmate and trick rider who's played by Jason Mitchell Roman is accepted into the selective wild horse training section of the program where he finds his own humanity in gentling in a, an especially unbreakable mustang Aww. so it, it's it's based off of a true story. It's not a true story, but it's kind of uh, goes off a, a true topic. I can that, base anything off of actual events. Well, the Unbreakable Mustang was true. Yeah. So there was once one. There those. was once, and yeah. it was they kind of told a story around <laughs> right, that yeah, one. Right. There was a Mustang that didn't want to be broken. Right. But that I <laughs> remember this going into this bag. movie blinded. I had I didn't see a trailer. I didn't see. I didn't know who was in it. I just kind I just knew it was good, and I went. And I sat by myself in the theater, and I was floored by Matthias is acting. He comes off it as this brooding, just angry individual, kind of as one would be in the like a movie you think you've seen before. Yeah, and as anyone would be in prison, like you're if you're spending life in prison, like how would that like, like we do? Yeah, it's just like. Lot, you just kind of given up on like everything and just angry all the time, and then you see as the movie just kind of progresses. Or you could be you, with the path he goes on. Or it's, you, or you could be the uh, the the Morgan uh, Freeman character who's just decided to be okay with it. So not all lifers true. are true. Just some of them are just like you know. Well, this particular character, he was very, <laughs> he was very uh, away from the world. Like his daughter would come in and see him, and he just kind of. So it sounds a lot like a movie I've seen before, but then you throw in him bonding with a horse. Ho- yeah, bonding that's so kind of, there we go. So that that I really suggest everyone should watch. It's in theaters right now, still in theaters for the time being. But if not, it's definitely a movie that'll probably be probably got to go to the H- Broadway, right? On HBO or it's, uh, it's, it is at, at Broadway yeah, theater. Yeah, I'm but saying, I you're went. You're not going to go see it. At- I went and saw it in uh, Midvale, the uh, Regal. 14. Some other snobby place. Anyway, that, so it, you it, liked it. You thought it was good. It was very good. My favorite yeah. movie of the year so far. Huh. And I think that it it should be talked about more. I think that it it's doing fairly well when it comes to critically wise. So it's just kind of I I want I don't think it'll be remembered. It'll be like one of those movies, kind of like Annihilation like was last year. We I love that movie. It's not, well, no, it's like it's yeah, kind of like one of those. But movies. it wasn't. Yeah, well, it was everybody's forgotten. talking about it. It was forgotten. Everybody's when Oscar, no, everybody's. Yeah, they did forget about it. And, and they, then when Oscars dude, comes it around, totally got should have had the place of uh, uh, Black Panther. That's it. It missed its. That's spot. what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, it's going to be one of those movies that I know when okay. Oscar season comes around, it's going to be completely forgotten. But I'm going to keep tabs on it just to make sure. So I'm going to give yeah. you one out of left field. One that you're not thinking about, one that I think that is actually a lot better than people because you see it and you're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm not watching that. Uh, the Can be- I guess? Yeah, Shazam, the Beach Bum. Dang it! Is that the one with James <laughs> Frank? Not James Frank. It was Zac Efron and and uh, all right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew Mc- I couldn't. I don't know. Why I couldn't remember his name. Where he's remember. playing the character that he was meant to play. Um, Beach Bum. As I think, did you see that? Uh, yeah, I seen the Beach Bum. Well, who's in that? I don't know. Matthew McConaughey, Zac Efron. Uh, he's the king of the bongo drumming, uh, <laughs> lays on fair cool. Uh, he assumes the role that this, he was born to play this. I mean, he's <laughs> it's it's he's like a bottom feeder. Um, he had like a huge poetry career that he kind of gave up to to be Matthew McConaughey basically and just through this story of a guy who is fine sleeping on your couch you realize he's just this brilliant like he's got Poet. this mind that so but he's like and I, I I guess I can associate with him because his mind has decided either I can struggle through making no money with these these things that I write that some people get and most people hate or I'll just sleep on your couch man like I'll let you feed me. I have a. Was it? 
no, so go ahead. So so we have Emily and uh, she's our she's working the board. She just said it was written by a girl. The name Harmony Kareen. Oh. Yeah, it's also got Snoop Dogg. Snoop. It's I'm got, part of a support group. Isla Fisher, um, Zach Efron, yeah, Martin a, Lawrence. Is that how you say your name? Isla? Yeah, Isla. Isla. I've been saying Isla. So I've been no, going to this um, support group for quite a while. It's it's adult males that actually like Zach Efron. I think he's pretty good. I think his I'm acting's pretty for, good. I think he's yeah, pretty talented, even though really like Zach I know Efron you're not too. supposed to say that in public. We'll, yeah. s- we'll see uh, what Netflix does with his movie because it comes out. Oh, the Ted Bundy one. The Ted Bundy one. It's comes not out getting two weeks. great. Well, it already came out at Sundance. It came it's out not, at Sundance, and the, it's not getting it's, great. It's not doing great. It's like a sixty-five exactly. percent. But like, even last year, though, yeah. that kind of uh, critic score means nothing to me when it comes okay, to the Oscars anymore. So he showed up to the Sundance Awards with blonde hair. Yeah, it's because he was for this film for mm-hmm. Beach, Beach Bum, Bum probably. I think it's for another film. Is it? You think? I think he's doing the reboot of Scooby Doo. I heard and about I'm that. Not, actually. And I'm not even kidding. I heard that. And I'm rumor. not even kidding. I, I heard I, that he's I, Fred. I yeah. think he's playing Fred. I remember that because uh, it's supposed to be like the. It's going to be starring Scooby Doo yeah. and Shaggy, because right? Because if because by the time the Sundance came out, he'd already been for when this came out. It's true. He would have already been done with the blonde hair. That makes he wouldn't sense. have needed the blonde hair by February because this came out. I think he's better off going to do a reboot of Scooby Doo than he is doing Ted Bundy. I don't know. Do you guys remember the first Ted oh, Bundy Ted movie Bundy. in the eighties? There was one, and the, the actor that was in that was Mark Harmon. Yeah. Before that, Mark Harmon was the stuff. He was the bee's knees. He was in everything. And that summer that school movie, <laughs> summer, yeah, summer school. school, which is a great movie. <laughs> But that killed his career. Yeah. He, he played Ted Bundy. Because he was so scary. He was so scary, and he did a good job at it. I, I think playing Ted Bundy is a, mis- a career mistake, honestly. Um, so we'll see how he does. I mean, I'm not looking forward to a reboot of Scooby-Doo, don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> but I think take, taking on a role of playing Ted Bundy, it's there's a history of that ruining career. So or, we'll see how it goes. Or it could be Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. True. Yeah. But Anthony Hopkins is, in a, is, in a, is not in the real world. You know what I mean? When you're playing Ted Bundy, that's, those That's are true. real events. I those things really a, happen. That's I got to do a movie with, uh, with Anthony Hopkins. Did you? I yeah. did. And I got to see him lose his temper. Because <laughs> um, a guy in one of the, uh, the, the uh, what are they called, extras, he kept doing the fava beans and he kept trying to get him. Oh, and yeah. he kept asking him, he's like, please stop. I'm trying to do something else. And the guy wouldn't stop. And in the middle of lunch, Anthony Hopkins went, you mmf me, Baba. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> Dude just gets grabbed and like dragged off set. And then 10 seconds later, he's like, hello, I'm Tony. <laughs> hello, nice to meet you. I'm Tony. I'm like, oh, hi, Tony. I ran into him when you guys were filming it. That was Fastest yeah. Indian, right? Yeah, World's Fastest Indian. Um, and uh, ran into him because I was out in Wendover, and you guys were filming it. And so I ran into him and said, hey, my brothers are working with you. And, they, and he knew you, so I had a little bit of a chat with <laughs> Anthony Hopkins at the, uh, what's the one? But that was the weirdest. Cause the like, Montego he, Bay. He just shows up, and like I'm doing all these rehearsals, and he's off doing these other scenes, and he finally shows up, and they're like, okay, you guys ready? You want to? You, you have any questions? And I said, can I say hi? <laughs> and he's all like, looks at me i'm like i'm jim he's like oh hello i'm tony and i'm all like can i really call you tony <laughs> sir like, tony and that's ah! the best the best british accent i think i've ever heard in fact yeah. i almost thought we had someone yeah, anthony from hopkins on the room. england from the uk and jim's a talented person i am very, very much so to, uh, to close out the the best movies of the year yeah, i wanted the, to, so far of uh, uh, so far Give me I one th- more, and I'll give you one more. I think that the one that it won't be nominated for best picture, but it's probably the front runner for best animated movie is How to Train a Dragon: The Hidden World. I love that franchise from start. Uh, the second one was crap. I love the second one. I think the second one's my favorite one out of the three. Wow. And I haven't seen any of them, so I, I can't say one it, way or the other. And <laughs> it's, finds it's, love. Well, I wouldn't even say that. It's the the relationship with him and his his dad is like something that really kind of draws me to the movie. And I always kind of picture my relationship with my father that way. Of, and I think most most kids do is just like not being able to live up to your father. And how can you move on through that? Your dad's the Phantom of the Opera. Well, he's yeah. a good dude. Yeah, and he's a great dude. And I and love my dad. Get, you didn't get that reference. I didn't. Who plays the Phantom of the Opera? I don't. The know. same guy who plays the voice. Oh. It's, it's uh, Gerard, Gerard Butler. Butler. Gerard, Gerard Butler. Sorry, I just you can't just pass over a gold Sorry. nugget like that. I think Brady, so I, if you like the franchise, don't listen to Jim. Well, Go for your dreams. And I think I think this movie will have 
special meaning as time goes on because i am just and in this third one it's it's about a boy and his dog kind of this film and and i'm just getting a dog so Aww. it'll be it'll be one of those situations that Don't kill eventually it. when it, it does pass away then i'll go back and watch the <laughs> third one. you wait hold on you're getting a dog and you're thinking about the day it's gonna pass it away it scares like, me I, but that's it but you haven't got me. the dog yet and you're already worrying about the passing yeah all right, you're going to need to work with someone on that. That's a deep-rooted issue that you're going to want to get to the bottom right, and of. And I'll give you one to go to, to, to feed off on that I think is getting, even though I love uh, Robert Rodriguez, I think he's a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker, uh, Alita, the Battle Angel. Yes, that, will, that one is. I think is going to get a lot of, uh, e- even though it's not getting a lot of critic Thanks. love, it's getting a lot of the, the people love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched this film, and I, I just don't like it. Yeah, you don't like it at and, all. And uh, and 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 I like Shark Boy and Lava Girl. That's a, wow. That's a. You made fun of him for <laughs> Train Your Dragon, and you like Shark but Boy and Lava Girl. But it's because I can't help it. It's like Team Diggory or Team uh, Shark Boy. Does anyone wow. get that reference? I, Cedric no. Diggory. Sark, Shark Boy mm. is the who who is in Taylor Lautner. T- yeah. Taylor Lautner from the movie Twilight. 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 <laughs> Cedric Cedric Diggory. From Twilight and Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter. So team Robert Pattinson, team, team oh, Shark yeah, Boy, right. the or Team Lautner and the team. What's the yeah, two characters? Jacob that are and team Edward. J- yeah, team and Edward. I would always make fun of that as a team. I've never source. seen. You had to go a long way for that joke. I had to go a long way. But anyways, way. I just the re- and the only reason why I didn't like this film is I think that the actual am- an animated animated girl isn't interesting at all. Hmm. See, that's what I've heard is the. The animation and the CGI and everything it affects is, it looks really cool, and it's it's done well. I think that's like the saving grace of the movie. And if it's anything, I think it's it'll be nominated for uh, visual effects. Uh, yeah, that's why I do too. But it, and it's of course it's really really early. But we've and I'm sure we're missing a bunch of movies that are like you guys. What about you know Stop. this? Well, let me just one thing because I know we're closing this out. But I watched because I I watched some of the Netflix movies and I know they're not going to be up for Oscars or anything. What like about that, Transit? But, dude, I, I watched that. Triple Frontier. Have you guys I saw, seen that? That was another movie that I had top eight. Yeah, I watched that and it wasn't uh, didn't change my they're life. Actually, it didn't make me want to be a better person. They're trying to get all Netflix films into not, the Oscars. No, out of Oscars. Well, so Steven Spielberg right now, is though. trying to say that it should be it, its it, own. Like, yeah, you can get what is it? A, is it a Tony or what's something the, like the that? TV awards. Yeah, but they're but trying you to can't get, it out. get an Academy Award. Yeah. I think that's kind of a shame because I think that's selling short the new uh, the new era of it's, movies. But really anyways, is. long story short, I, th- it was an entertaining movie. Great I, cast. It, it was a great cast. I love pretty much everybody that's in that. Um, well, and I to, not to cut you off, but I I really like uh, Oscar Isaac and. Batflick, Ben Affleck, and Oscar Batflick, Isaac is always good in my, everything. I think my favorite character is the is Pedro Pascal, and like at the end of the movie, I was like, "That's the guy." I'm really excited because he's as the star. Here's my Star Wars plug. He's gonna he's, he's the, he's the yeah, leading Mandalorian. The new Mandalorian TV show, and at the yeah. end of it, I can't wait to see that because a did you I love Marco. Uh, I did not see Marco, but I did watch him in Game of Thrones. Yep, yep. And he Prince stole. Oberyn. He, he was stole. awesome that season, season four. Yeah, he was he's great. great. Yeah, so I'm excited really to see uh, his career go forward. And yeah, he's great, and it was a great cast, and it was you know it was well it was well done, well shot. Um, you know, some really cool, fun scenes. I thought, I mean, it, it was. I think there's there's some decent. At first, Netflix content was coming out, and it was terrible. Oh, well, it wasn't great. Yeah, and now they're starting to get to the point where they're putting out. Well, no, they're putting he, out some he, decent he still content. Gets, he gets the most uh, views still. The, his his films are still yeah. the most watched on yeah. Netflix. So. Yeah. Why not give them a freaking billion dollars? Right. But and I think it's crap, coming a long way. That venue is crap. coming a long way. They have to because Disney is pulling all their movies away yeah. for their Disney Plus. So now they're and they've come out and said that most of their content now is going to be their own produced content. Well, they have to. That's why you lost Daredevil. You lost yeah. all of them. And my, my like my son, who's a big fan of all of them, mm-hmm. they keep getting canceled. Uh, and he's like, "Why are they canceling all these great Disney shows?" I'm like, back. "I'm like, because well, and Disney's not going to produce a rated R TV show, and so well, they're, that's they're, actually and I, they're not going to let someone else." have them they're gonna squash yeah, them exactly well they're gonna squash them the, um whatever um uh, robert Iger, the the head of disney said that he was not going to change deadpool to go off of that radar we're, we're running really tight on time right now but we'll probably talk about they it won't play any of them i promise you they're gonna kill them I, I i i hope not i love deadpool i want to see him keep keep on and this no disney. i'm talking on the i'm talking like daredevil and yeah daredevil they and won't, Luke they, Cage won't and they will not show Iron those will not show Jessica up Jones. on the streaming on service the disney for disney we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, i'm still hold, holding out hoping that they give us the kind of more 
I don't want to say mature content. They won't. It, it, I doubt it, but that's why I'm hoping this Mandalorian thing is kind of pushes the like along the lines of not as gruesome as Great Game of Thrones, but along those lines. It won't be, but I want I want it to. High hopes. Um, High hopes. We're gonna close out with what's next with a song and a prayer. Not a a song, but a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> the debut or the screening for our friend. Two Aquilo yep. movies tomorrow yep. at eight o'clock at the Valley Fair Mall. Yes, yes, go see it. Are you going to go? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get there. I'm very popular, um, <laughs> but I'm going to try. I, I will try as well. I don't have much. I'm not. What's popular. your film for me for next week? Oh yes, I, I, come back to me. I have to rethink okay. what that was. F- wrap up. Then let's get each other's movies and let's close this down. Well, no, you give me yours. Then I already me, told you, Sunshine, Sunshine, Danny oh, Boy. Crap. I have to think. I had oh um. Uh, Swiss Army Man, that's what one. All right. So one with Daniel Radcliffe. Anyway. I love uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> we Dude. want to thank Mike for coming on. We'll probably hear from you again uh, soon. Oh, Mike D. Yeah. Very, very nice Not to be here. Appreciate Mike the D. time. It's been a good, it's been a good uh, hour-ish. We've, thanks thanks about, for help from Emily over yeah, there on Emily, the side. With the, the stat checker, Emily Fox in the in the corner. You can check me out at uh, Jimmy Smooth. uh on uh, the, the, the Twitter, G-Y-M-M-Y-S-M-O-O-T-H, Jimmy Smooth. And then you can find me at Mr. Clarkster, M-R underscore Clarkster, C-L-A-R-K-S-T-E-R on Instagram and the Twitter. And then follow us on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook. Give us a like. That really helps us. And we're still trying to get Apple to co- uh, coordinate. We're still not there yet. We're but working we, on it. We're getting there. Anyway, we we're getting thank better you guys. at this. We're getting, well, thank you guys and see you guys next time. I didn't week. fall asleep. Hi, Mom.